You know, I just have to uh, trust in the Lord. And I made a comment last night when, when we were in uh, Savannah. I said, you can't follow your five senses. And I hear the Lord talking to me this morning and saying, you can't go by your five senses. <laughs> Uh, last time when we were in Savannah, there was a man that came with his Oriental wife. And uh, I use that term only because that's the only way I know to describe it. And uh, she did not, they couldn't come last night because they had to work too late. But they sent a text uh, to Tanya who is one of, the, one of the ladies that comes to meet me. And her husband was hurting in her back, in his back, and in his, uh, his side. He's always over here. And I prayed for him, and you know, sometimes you just know something's happening. Jesus. Anyway, she wrote, she wrote back and she said, please tell him and I'm the him uh, that her husband got healed. Amen. So that was a month ago. But uh, he had been in pretty, pretty rough pain and some rough conditions for his back. But thank the Lord, thank he the got Lord. totally healed. Amen. And uh, she did a lot of crying that night, and we got her into a counseling session. And they tell me she got some help from that Amen. session also. So that was good. And uh, last night we broke some things. Amen. You know, Amen. Uh, I wasn't satisfied with the service, but that's, that's just me. God told me when I got home that we had done exactly what he wanted to do. So Amen. who am I? He, he's God. Uh, why don't you go with me this morning to Hebrews 11, 1. And Father, we just uh, pray for you to touch us and touch the people on Facebook, on YouTube, and, and send, send this message where you want it to go all around the world in the name of Jesus. We just wait on you, Lord. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So read it again with me, if you will. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith has substance for the things that you're hoping for. And if you have hope, you have expectation. Yes. Yes. You're expecting something to change. And prophecy that came forward last night was take a step. Mm. Step out into it. You know, uh, I'm reminded when, when Joshua had the priest and they were ready to go across the Jordan River, God had told him that uh, it won't split until they put their feet in the water. So there wouldn't be any change to the Jordan River. And the Jordan River was not at its lowest point. It was at its highest point. Okay. So even when they got there, they stopped to go to the Jordan. And the Lord had to remind them, you've got to take the first step. <clears throat> You're going to step into the water. <clears throat> Excuse me. So faith has substance of an expectation. And faith also has evidence of the things that's not seen. So you know there's a miracle there for you. Amen. But you got to step into it. You gotta, you gotta 
exercise your faith. And I got to do the same thing if it's about praying for you or if it's about something in your body you know, or if it's about your finances or if it's about your marriage. Or, uh, you, can, you can only run away from these things for so long and then you got to run into them mm -hmm. or you're not going to see anything. You won't get any results. When God was working on me when I, when I first got saved, he made a comment. He said, uh, he said, if, you, if, if I can save you, don't you think I can heal you? And I had been fighting something for 13 and a half years, and in six months, he took it all away. And in that six months, what he started doing was put the word in me that had to do with healing. And I know you've already heard all that before, but when the day came for the healing to come, uh, I had just moved my family to Johnson City, Tennessee, and he had just put the bedspread on, on the bed, and the mover, moving man was still in the house. And they're still putting stuff in the house. And I knelt down by the bed because this epileptic seizure was coming back and this, this migraine was coming back and this blindness was coming back. And Linda walked in the room and she said, what's going on? I said, this stuff is all trying to come back and God told me I was healed. And Satan has to leave me alone. And she put her hand on me and she said, well, I disagree with you for all of that in the name of Jesus. She walked out of the room. And uh, that's all I get. <laughs> so I turned around and I knelt down by the bed and I said, Father, what are you saying? And he said immediately, he said, go downstairs and play with Mitch. And Mitch had a TV about maybe as big as this, it wasn't even as big as this, this podium. But he's playing TV tennis. In the meantime, while I'm getting up to walk down there, my body is saying to me, go to bed, you're sick, go to bed, you're sick, go to bed, you're sick, like a broken record. But God had already said what he wanted to say. So God has already said what he wanted to say to you Amen. about your miracle. Amen. Amen. But you've got to step into it. Now, the second time this prophecy was coming to force last night, I kept standing there because I thought she was talking to somebody else. I didn't think she was talking to me. And then she finally pushed me. Sometimes you have to be pushed to get into your, your miracle. And I realized it was she talking to me. <laughs> but then, see, something started coming out of me for somebody else. So God, God wasn't trying to prepare me for a miracle. He had something for somebody else. Okay. And if you think about that Jordan River, that Jordan River is at its peak. It's overflowing the banks. And here's these guys carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And they're, you know, they, they stop. Because the current is so strong, as soon as they put their feet in there, they may lose it. <coughs> and if they go by their five senses, they don't want to go any further at all. I, I'm just getting this from the Lord now, this last night. Because, you know, my five senses right now are in hell. Excuse me, but that's where what's happening. But faith is still here. Faith is here for you. Hallelujah. Faith is here yes. for us. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and we walk into faith because we practice walking in love. Yes. So faith works by love. Yes. Thank you. Now, in, in John chapter 2, they run out of wine. 
And, and Jesus says to his, to his mama, uh, woman, what am I to do with thee? My hour has not yet come. So he's trying to put it off because he feels like this is not my time. But she pulls him and pushes him into his yes. past. Yes. His own mother. <clears throat> I thought about that. You know, I said, when my mama was alive and she rode with me in the in the truck, she was she was like my co-pilot for six weeks. And we would go to different places. And she'd say, uh, I, I hope the I hope the Lord touches me when we get in this meeting. You know, and, and she wants she wanted the Lord to put her on the floor. She wanted the Lord to touch her with the Spirit of God. And we were going to uh, Bixby, I think it is, if I'm saying it right, in South Georgia. Bax, Baxley? Baxley. Baxley. That's what it is. And we were riding down there. And, uh, and she started talking about, you know, I hope the Lord does this for me. I hope the Lord. And, and that guy just walked by her. <laughs> the guy put her on the floor. She already knew. She already was thinking about what God was going to do. And it did it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Jesus is saying, you know, it's not my time. And, and then she talks to the, the, the guys there and she says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. So whatever he's going to tell you to do today, do it. Yes, yes, yes. This, this is the day that God has made for miracles to happen in this place. Yes, yes. I mean, we've been waiting on this ever since Jim and I went to uh, see uh, Jesse. Jesse DePlantis. Jesse DePlantis, yes. Yeah. And we knew when we came out of Jesse's place that this was the beginning of miracles yes, for our place. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. All right, and, and, and Jesus got up and he told the guys, he says, fill the water pots with water. He still doesn't know the, the, the fullness of the miracle that's going to come. I don't think he does. But he says he's stepping out by faith and he says he's taking that first step and he's filling the water pump with water. And there's not a lot of, uh, okay, God, you got to do this now. You know? and, uh, okay, Father, it's either my time or it's not my time. Come on, come on. He, he's not saying any of those things. He's very quiet. And he simply takes that first step. Fill the pots with water. And uh, they, they must have been pretty big pots because they put a lot of water in them. And then verse 8, he says, draw it out and bear unto the governor of the feast. Okay. The person who set up the wedding, I, I take it, you know, like we do today, there's somebody that orchestrates the wedding and gets all the flowers and puts the boutonnieres on the guys and yeah. sticks his hand through their chest and so <laughs> forth, you know, and, and does all that. But when they take the water to the governor, the governor doesn't know it. governor doesn't know. Verse 10 he says, uh, every man at the beginning do it, set forth good wine. And when he had uh, well drunk, then the worst, the worst. But thou hast kept good wine until now. So and we know that's the type of the Holy Spirit that Jesus is telling us that Holy Spirit is coming. See, so, so this is the opening of a miracle. Okay, but the Holy Spirit has come. Yes. 
And the Holy Spirit is in you. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is in this place. Yes. And he's yes. waiting for us to activate Ooh, that first step of faith. Yes. And step in that Jordan yes. River to watch his heart. Yes. And yes. change yes. come yes. into your yes. life. It's time. Yes. It's time. Yes. It's time. Yes. And God is beyond time. So it's, it's beyond time. Yes. Because it's your step that's going to make the difference. That's right. Still in Hebrews 11, uh, 6, but without faith it's impossible to please him. But with faith it's possible to please him. He'd be very pleased to give you what you're believing for by faith today. It would please God. For it is God who, who's ready to work in you, who's willing to do of his good pleasure. He's already ready. Waiting on you. For he to come into God must believe that he is. Okay? If, if we don't believe that he is, what are we doing in this place? Mm. Why are we in church on a Sunday morning? Come on, man. Come on, man. Yes. He, that, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yes. You wake up this morning thinking about God? Yes. Did you say hello to him or good morning to him? Or, you know, something, or you got you something that you read this morning before you even came to church? It came out of your Bible? Now it's time for your faith. Romans 1 17, it says, The just shall live by faith. The just shall live how? By faith. So we've got to step into our faith. When I went downstairs to play with Mitch, I was obeying God. And I didn't know what God was going to do, but that stuff started getting a hold of me. And it got in my hand and made my hand all numb and was working up my arm. But I knew I had heard God go downstairs to play with Mitch. I couldn't see the TV anymore because my, my eyes were all blurred. But I was still telling Mitch, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you. He's, he's nine years old, I think. And all of a sudden, uh, after about five minutes, it just, it was all gone. Praise God, praise God. Why? I had stepped, made that first step of faith, and I had moved into what God wanted me to do. And what he said, and I, had, I was in obedience. Yes. Okay, the second time when he healed my back, and this is five months ago, I, I needed a new disc in there. You got one bad disc, you can't hang wallpaper, you can't. You can try to hang it, you know, <laughs> all cracked up. But after five months of just confessing the word and believing God and standing by faith, the Lord came in the bedroom and he, I'm laying on my back and he said, just receive your healing. And I said, Lord, I can do that. And bam, the power of God shot out of heaven. My words were my faith in action. And as soon as I said what, what God wanted me to receive, I said, Lord, I can do that. The power of God hit me in my belly and went all the way through and my whole body came up off the bed just this quick, that fast, and it was all over. And I had a new disc. I got up out of the bed and I could touch my, my toes back then, you know, and everything. And the, the following couple of days went by, and me and another fellow were going into Florida to do some preaching. And I said, come on. And I called him by name. I said, let's run. He said, what do you want to run for? I said, I've been able to run in a year and a half. So we ran to the meeting, and I beat him and left him behind me. I was so glad just to be able to move around. Pain. Praise God, man. Mm. And, and 
see that the reason you you can't go back and find the senses because right now it's like it's like darkness is covering you. It's like darkness keeping you from getting what you're supposed to get from the God. And it's your miracle. It's already been ordered by you, by your prayers, and by what you believe. So this is the next step to what you believe is to get into the get into that Jordan River and let it split. And while they had the river split, Joshua says, go get 12 rocks and pile them up in the middle of the river there. And I mean, they, they got this thing split, man. I mean, I'd have just got across that thing and said, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> we made it. We made it. Right. When I got my back to you and I got the new disc, the faith was gone. The faith to believe for that was over. So whatever the author and the finisher of faith is building in you right now, your expectation has got to be as high as his. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready to move for you. What it comes down to is, are you ready for him to move? Yes. 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 We went to the village church uh, here in Warner Robins uh, on Alberta Road. Y'all know what I'm talking about, like down there, there, King, King Drive, there's a red light there. Yes. Uh, somebody know his name? I can't remember his name. Uh, Deliverance Tabernacle. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a man in a chair. And I thought, I'm the blood of Jesus Christ, and, and the glory came in that place. And in the middle of the sanctuary, there was about eight or ten people in that area. And all of a sudden they went, oh, and they all fell on the ground. Well, that was the Holy Spirit telling me, I'm here. And he had just kicked the center of that church and went out from there. And he was making himself available to everybody in that church. And I looked at that man in the wheelchair and I said, are you ready to stand up? You know what his answer was to me? I can't. I can't. So he had, he didn't develop any faith for his healing for whatever reason. He, either he went in it by himself or, or he just wasn't studying about faith or they weren't teaching about that. So he didn't have any expectations and, and, and even one of the people that was in that meeting made a comment later about you were in a different realm of faith than where we were or we could have got some things that night. Didn't matter if you were a visitor. It didn't, didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter what color you were. It didn't matter how old you were, how young you were. Yes, that's it. That's it. Mm. It's a word. And, and you're saying you believe it. You just sang about it and said you believe it. That's right. And here's Jesus doing a miracle when he says, my time had not come. His mother proved him wrong. God the Father just moved. Said, you know, and, and later he says, if you can't believe me, believe the works that I've done. Yes, yes, God. Well, when are we going to begin to see the works that he's done? When are we going to do uh, 1412 of John? And we're going to do the works that he did, greater works than what we do. How, how much longer we got to keep hearing the message, but we're not standing up for the message, and we're not moving into the split the water for the message. How much more have you got to hear? The just shall live by faith, Romans 117. It's in there five times. It goes from the Old Testament. Don't, don't think it's in Revelation, but it's it's in the epistles. Glory. Romans 12 and 3, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith.
paid. So you can't say, well, I, I didn't get any faith when I accepted the Lord. Yes, you did. Right. Or you don't believe it. Now, what are you doing with that faith that you've got from the Lord? Is it just part of, well, I'm going to heaven. Okay, that's good. Because mm -hmm. God will get there. And maybe you're standing around at night and you're practicing the rapture, you know, and you're jumping up and down. <laughs> that hadn't come yet. But what else are you doing with your faith? Because you've got that measure of faith. Now, at home, um, uh, Linda, Linda goes and she's got a trainer to help her. And she comes home and that trainer wears her out. And she says, boy, that lady wore me out again, you know. <laughs> but she's got her doing three sets of this and three sets of that and using weights and riding on different machines and different exercises. And she said, I learned how to bend this. <laughs> You know, they had to bend that. And I don't know how to bend those things yet, you know, but I got some exercise stuff I'm doing at home too because you got to keep your body going, right? Yes. And I'll take the dog and we'll go out and walk, you know, and I'm, I'm walking my mile or walking, you know, whatever, you know, and, and we're doing some of those things. So I got to do the same thing in the spirit world and I got to exercise this faith. God told me a long time ago, he said, you exercise faith to put the money out there and give it to me, and you exercise faith to call it back and get it back from me. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Both ways. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. But we do have a measure of faith, and we do want to please him. That's, that's what you got to settle inside of you. That's what Joshua and those priests had to settle that day, you know. Okay, we've come to this river, and God didn't let it be at the lowest point. He let it be at his highest point. You ever seen the old monkey when it's at his highest point? I don't even like to drive by it on the bridge because it frightens me. I don't I don't want to be down near that, that water, and that water take me. You know, there were four of us went down to Florida, Swanee, Florida, and we went on the Swanee River, and, and these people that owned the, the, the boat dock gave us um, a nice, uh, what do you call it, that goes out there, it was like a house on the water, you know, and all you had to do was drive that thing and go anywhere you wanted to go on the Swanee River. The only thing he asked me to do, he said, don't go out to the Gulf of Mexico. So we had to turn around when we got near there and come back and go up the Swanee River. Well, one of the guys jumped in the water. And the undertow was so bad, he couldn't get back to the boat. And he'd be drowned if his son had not been there. And his son was a wrestler in high school. You know, big old kid. He jumped at me after daddy, and he just went back to the boat with his daddy. You know how you do. Or how some big guys do. Anyway. He got him back in the boat. But imagine that Gulf of Mexico, imagine that that river. That Joshua's, they got to get across that river and it's as high as it's, it's at its peak, it says. God's already appeared to Joshua. God's already got inside of you. And you believe in him, but you've never seen him that I know of. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're fortunate enough to have seen some angels. I mean, I'm not, he don't let me see anything in the spirit world. I have to believe it because he says it. That's right. I believe it. So the, the, the miracle, you know, Jesus is sitting there and, and Mama says, they need some wine, son. No. <laughs> and he says, it's not my time. And she says, yeah, it is. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons why I became the best wine. Because it can't ferment. Because it wasn't made by man. And man didn't add any alcohol to it. Made, made by a miracle, made by his glory.
glory. You're carrying this glory of God, and, and you keep hearing about it, and it keeps getting bigger, and it keeps getting better, but when is it going to activate your faith and change you so that you get your miracle? Yes, yes, yes. It's today God wants the miracle. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And several of the great teachers of faith, they keep saying, by hearing, and 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 hearing, by the word of God. You know? And you've heard that before, I know. something going on that you have because he's in faith. Yeah. He knew from seeking his father it was time for that to happen. Yes. So is today the day for your miracle? Hallelujah. And I could change that. Is today the day for your new ears? Mm. <laughs> is today the day for your new eyes? Is today the day for God to do mechanical all over your body and just, you know, you, you take the car into, into the shop and maybe you're going in there just to change the oil, but the mechanic hears this rattle that's not right and he sees this belt that's almost worn. And, well, he just starts working on a lot of things or he will come and ask you and tell you how much it's going to cost and maybe you need some of his spark plugs and we can go on the line, down the line. But maybe you just need the mechanic to come today, which is Christ, and touch you from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. And see, one of, one of the things I keep walking into that people don't like to talk about is this UTI. Urinary tract infection. And I didn't, I didn't like any of it, but in 2018, after my open heart surgery, I went through that thing five times. Mm -hmm. And it keep, keep getting, getting in me and getting in me. And that nurse kept telling me, well, it, it, it can't come from anybody else. It's just got to be in you. That's a bunch of bull. <laughs> Because as many places as I've been and lay hands on people, I always end up with a UTI. And I'm saying, this ain't mine. This is somebody else's that I took away from them. And you have to get out of me in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and I know we don't like to talk about those kind of things, you know. But it's a part of your body. Yes, it is. And last night, for the first time, I started getting some things from God that had to do with constipation. And then you know, don't like to talk about that either, you know. Or, well, I just got a stomach problem. You know? No, it ain't your stomach, it's your bowels. And you got bowels, whether you like it or not. You know? And you got a bladder, and you got other things. And, you know, and then your knees start hurting. You don't want to talk about that, but your back can be out, you know. And, and we don't want, we don't want to even want to think about one leg strong longer than the other, or, or my arms need to be grown out. You know, those are all weird things. You know, we don't do that in church. Confession is good. Well, kind of do. You know, Charles and Francis Hunter used to do it. You see all kinds of miracles happen. 
spent four or five minutes one day uh, talking about when you came up there for prayer, not to be praying in the spirit. And she, got, she actually got upset with this guy. And she says, I tell you to shut up. And she hit his mouth and a <laughs> and he fell over under the power of God. And he didn't pray no more. <laughs> I don't know if he got anything or not, but she got upset with him. He wasn't, he wasn't here to think she said. All right, I'm not going to prolong this, but this is your day. You know, uh, John chapter 14 was the other place to go to. 14, 12. 14, 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. So if you can't believe the Christ or the Jesus that's in you and you need a healing, then it's believe that Jesus can do it. Yes, yes, yes. Because he and the Father are hooked up together and the Holy Spirit's really not left out because he's right there with them. Because you're on the earth and they're in heaven. But they also move inside your spirit. So you've got the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in your spirit waiting for you to come forth and bam! Just yes. let that thing be changed. See, and then uh, if, if, if you finish what he's saying there, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe it on me, he that believe it on me, he that believe it on me, well, that, that's who you believe on, and me is Jesus. Yes. The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. But you won't see any greater works if you don't put some faith in it. You won't see anything happen if you don't step into it. Those priests stopped at the Jordan River, and God had to remind Joshua again. I said they had to step in the water. Well, it's time for God to remind us again. I told you, you got to take a step. And last night, that, that lady said something to me, take, take a step, take a step. I thought she was talking to somebody else. And I'm trying to listen to God for other things. And she finally pushed me out there. Well, sometimes you need a push. Yes. Or sometimes your push is just to push into God. Yes, that's good. Push! That's good. That's good. That's right. Aunt Rosa had a church in Macon, and the pastor's wife in Macon used to lead prayer, and she was a wonderful prayer leader. Because she would tell the people, Come on, you ain't prayed enough. I want you to push. And I sat down there one night and we, we started, we started by her her leadership, just, just pushing into God, pushing into God, pushing into God. And then the next day I got out here and it was a Sunday. And the Lord kept saying, Don't stop. Keep pushing into me. Keep pushing into me. Keep pushing into me. Don't stop. And I saw some things happen that Sunday morning. But then I stopped. You know, flesh, flesh enjoys breaking. Yeah. How many of you come to church and fall asleep? You know? your, your flesh enjoys it. Your flesh is weak. But God said, keep going, keep going. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. But not without your measure of faith. So one more time, let's go back to Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith has the substance or is the substance of the things you hope for and are expecting for the evidence of things not seen is in your faith. You've seen it by faith. You've, you've seen that back straighten out. You've, you've seen that bladder get better. You've, you've seen that compromise that's been going on in your life be shattered and broken 
because you're changing your lifestyle. Yes. You see those things. Yes, that's true. Yeah. You know what it is for somebody to give you $20, $100, $1,000. There was a lady there last night. She said, so-and-so came to visit me, and, and she'd been sick and had a stroke. And this lady, before she left, she says, she gave me $1,000. She said, by the way, I'm going to tie to you out of that tonight. I said, praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I think she forgot it. <laughs> People make a lot of promises that they don't keep, you know. Oh, Lord, help me. I didn't mean to be there. <laughs> Do you believe the name of Jesus is above every name? Yes. I was teaching that in Florida, and you know this, but it but it fits right here. And and the lady came up and she bowed over. And the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit said to me, Whatever you say, I'll do it. And I took that lady and I said, Come here. And I mean she she bowed over and she she's the one in the in the post office that puts the mail in the slot box. And after she got straightened out, she told me, said, I used to have to use the stool to get up to the top. But I don't need a stool anymore. In the name of Jesus. By the authority of the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit changed her that day. And every bone went back in place. Okay. There's one other one I want you to have. Maybe you're 50 years old. Maybe you're 40. Maybe, maybe you're 70. But I like one of the things that Dodie Osteen said in the movies. She said, I took a picture of me and John. And I don't know how old she was, but she says, we were, we were only in our 20s when we got married. And she said, I put that up there in the, in the wall. And she said, I've been believing all these years. Now this is from 1981 and she's still alive. She said, I keep looking at that picture and that's how young I am on the inside. Hello. I was 24. When I came back from Turkey, and 10 days later, the Sunday night, I got married. And you talk about a guy that was in shape. You know, I'm, I'm 80 years old now, and my boobs hang down, you know. And, and some other things hang down, too. But, uh, when I was 24, that, that guy was a, a picture of health. And I, I took that marriage picture and I put it up there and I said, okay, God, I'm going back to that. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be on the inside. And you're going to have to take care of the outside. <laughs> and I keep trying to find the exercise to get these things to go back up where they belong, you know. They don't seem to move too fast. <laughs> Some of y'all laughing at me. <laughs> Maybe you're going through the same thing. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, while you're young, you better, you better keep exercising. Don't give up your exercise. It may be only 1% of what you need, but it's a big 1%. What's the Lord want to do today? Miracle. What are you ready for? Miracle. Miracle. Rodney, come and take this thing and move it, would you? Put it over there. You know what you need. I'm going to take the step. 
of moving into God, moving by faith. And you, you know, there, there's a lady that came. I don't remember what church I was in, but she came with her own interpreter. And she said, I'm glad you're here. She's pointing that finger at me like this, you know. And, and sometimes people have long fingers, you know. And she just got that finger in my face. She says, I'm getting my, my healing today when you yes. pray for me. And the interpreter saying the same thing. And you, you know, Paul says you can see the, you can see the faith. Wow. You could see the faith in that woman. And as soon as I touched her, I knew she had it. Mm. She had what she was believing for. Wow. Hallelujah. So if this is not the day, then that's okay. <laughs> but if it is the day, then come on. Mm -hmm. And I've asked these two to help me. Mr. Bader and Ms. Jenna, that's why you guys stayed in here today. I just want them to back me up, and I, I don't want you to use the chairs today. I want you just to come and let the Lord do what he wants to do. And if we're supposed to do more, we're going to do more. We're going to say things to you or, or operate by the Holy Spirit. And again, if I went by my five senses, I would not have gotten out of the bed this morning. I would have called her and said, you preach. Because this is supposed to be her week. So if you're coming, you need to come.